Welcome to the madhouse. <laughs> What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to another episode of the Mindless War Podcast. Today, we have a very special guest for episode 82. Sammy, please introduce our guest today. Yeah, what's up, everyone? Uh, today, we have the one, the only, Ted Doherty. Uh, Ted Doherty is a writer, producer, and director for Plague Productions. It has worked on uh, numerous haunts, including Not Scary Form, Universal Studios Halloween Horror Nights, Queen Mary's Dark Harbor, Cedar Fair, Hollow Studios. Prior to authoring the award-winning book Knots Halloween Haunt, A Picture History, Ted terrified thousands of guests in Not Scary Farms' famous ghost town as one of the infamous street monsters. All right, Ted, it is a pleasure. Hi, everybody. It is a pleasure to have you on the show today. We are very excited to uh, talk to you a little bit about uh, Plague, about your time as a haunt monster. Um, and just overall your love for the uh, haunt industry because you guys do such amazing work year after year and we are always excited to see what you guys have to bring to the table every year so again thank you so much for coming on the show and uh, we're excited to have you thank you guys so much for having me I'm ready to uh, talk some shop up with you guys all right perfect let's well that's uh I think there's no better way to start than in the beginning so what inspired you really to get into the haunt industry um, well, I, uh, I kind of grew up uh, being a fan of this kind of stuff and uh, always loved monsters growing up and, and horror movies. You know, a big fan of like uh, all the George Romero, you know, Dawn of the Dead films, all that kind of thing, Evil Dead. Uh, then really got into werewolf films like The Howling and American Werewolf in London, that kind of stuff. And then, um, really, since growing up here in Southern California, really obsessed with theme parks and Disneyland and Knott's Berry Farm and even, you know, Magic Mountain back in the day and Universal Studios. Awesome. Yeah. I mean, some of these, uh, yeah, like, theme just parks. love that yeah. stuff. And then uh, the teenager discovery. Yeah. Yeah. Some of these theme parks, man, they're, they're just I mean, they're iconic from, like you said, a lot of the iconic ones, Disneyland, Knott's, Universal. I mean, we see these theme parks uh, year after year. A lot of them do Halloween time events, and they, they get into the Halloween spirit. Um, one, one particular one that actually really started this whole big trend of the, uh, the haunt scene was Knott's Scary Farm. So um, we know that you were a Knott's Scary Farm monster at one point. How long did you do that for? Well, um, just to kind of swing back to that first question real quick is just, uh, you know, getting into this industry of just being a fan of all of this stuff, uh, discovering Not Scary Farm as a teenager uh, is really kind of what sparked uh, an interest in this uh, industry. And so eventually sort of discovering that and then uh, crossing the threshold and, and becoming one of the monsters uh, was, was, a, was a big thrill. And uh that was uh, several years ago now, uh, and started working in a now defunct scare zone named The Swamp. And so I uh, was able to do that for a couple of years as one of the sliders and stuff, and you know did the whole certification process and everything. And then uh, transferred over to Ghost Town as, as a werewolf, which was a lot of fun, and uh, you know slid all over there too as well. And then concurrent with that, started to uh, develop more of an interest in uh, training uh, the monsters, doing the scare schools and things like that, training sliders. And then and, and that really kind of uh, got more into a little bit more than just scaring the folks uh, on stage. And then concurrent with all of that, I uh, began working as a producer for a, a magazine called Haunted Media Magazine that covered Halloween events uh, around the country. And so that gave me a lot of exposure to what else was going on outside of the nuts bubble. Definitely. Uh, and thinking back to your time as a monster, what was like your favorite part of that? 
Mm. Uh, I mean, I think one of the things I really enjoyed was, was just being there, you know, being at Not Scary Farm every day, you know, just checking in at, at the beginning of a shift or whatever and, and preparing for the shift and, and being on stage. Just being there every day was, was you know, such a treat because I'd spent so many years just going as a fan. Um, and, and in the early days, it was only operating a couple of weekends. So you only had a couple of shots a year to see the event. Uh, so just to be there all the time and really kind of soak in all of that energy was is pretty much one of the the main reasons I kept going back. Definitely, um, because yeah, we we uh, I remember actually watching a documentary um on YouTube about the you know the sliders of Ghost Town, and I remember seeing you in it, um, and uh, you guys talking about your time at Ghost Town and your time at Knotts, and I, I could see the passion from a lot of these people who have worked there in the past who've just loved doing it and who, who truly just love the haunt industry and just i could see people like you who who want to give back to this industry and who want to you know just you're approaching things as fans how what you want what fans want to see and stuff and i and i see that every year we go to these events um that like a true fan actually made these you know these mazes come to life make these nightmares come to life and it's it's one of those things where um we every year that we go it, it's just it's a blessing like because we love seeing what's coming new what's coming to the parks next what inspired the transition of, of scare acting to the production side of things um well uh yeah i mean just real quick as, as a side note to what you were saying before yeah i mean we were all very passionate about working not scary farm and that was uh, something that was you know set you know over 40 years ago by the people that that started that whole thing and i think it's a tradition that continues to this day with that passion uh with the monsters and i think uh, that is a big reason uh, and part of the uh, event's success uh but um you know transferring over the more to production side uh you know really after sort of those monster days were, were behind me and, and and started looking at different avenues uh started working with outside companies uh, because I, you know, because since I had worked Not Scary Farm, I had produced some things for, for Haunted Media Magazine and, 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 and other elements, really started to get more into uh, production and uh, started working with different companies in terms of writing and, and, and producing these things and eventually uh, getting into uh, directing them. But really the, the, the early genesis of that was uh, through Haunted Media Magazine and, and, and working with them and them uh, giving me that opportunity to uh, really uh, get my feet wet in, in producing uh, uh, things and, and directing them. Yeah, th th thank you for that. Um... One one thing you you know you mentioned you were writing um, for Haunted Media. Um, another thing you wrote was uh, <clears throat> the that well you helped write obviously was that you know that basically that history of of not scary farm. Uh, what really made you decide to to take on that project? Well, uh, toward the end of, of my working as a monster, there were rumors at the time that Cedar Fair might be uh, either being sold or dulling off Knott's Berry Farm. I can't remember all the details, but it really kind of freaked me out. And uh, I had spent uh, years uh, working on a, uh, like a fan website named ultimatehaunt.com. And uh, that uh, covered a lot of different types of historic elements and interviews of past employees. And so uh, when we kind of started getting word that maybe Knott's Berry Farm might be sold, like I said, it kind of freaked me out. I'm like, oh my gosh, what's gonna happen to Knott's? So I really wanted to take the opportunity to uh, document the event's history. I, I worked at, as an associate producer for Season of Screams, which was a full-length documentary on Not Scary Farm. That might have been the one you were talking about before. And that was produced by the same company that owned uh, Haunted Media Magazine. And so even with that, though, that documentary coming out, there was still a lot of questions and a lot of loopholes uh, in the event's history. And so the idea was, okay, let's really uh, dive in here and document the heck out of this thing and really answer all of these uh, questions. So spent a couple of years researching that book, 
uh, going you know to libraries, spending hours on end going through like microfilm and all kinds of things just to find and locate people that had uh, worked on the event uh, in some kind of capacity throughout the years to try to uh, see if we can't fill in some of these gaps. And then of course, working with Knotts and, um, and uh, their archives and the Orange County archives, and just really compiling as much information as, as I could. I spent my, it's like over 80 interviews tracking down all of these people. And so eventually, yeah, I, I, I wrote the book on uh, Knotts Halloween Haunt, A Picture History. And that uh, was, was great. We're really blessed to have a little bit of success from it. You know, we got to, to sell it at Knotts for uh, several seasons and several years and uh, do all kinds of book signings and stuff. And that really opened up a lot of doors for me as well because other companies started to, to kind of discover me as somebody like, oh my God, so this is a dude that like knows a lot about this world famous event. Maybe he can come and, and help us since he's uh, produced some things. So that's kind of how that worked. Definitely. I mean, this book, uh, it sounds amazing. I got to get my hands on it to read it because I'm always looking for something to keep me busy during the off season. And that, that sounds like something that will just keep me going, going excited. So, so that's, that's definitely, definitely on my list of stuff to uh, to check out. And I heard you had now, uh, Neil Patrick Harris on it. How did you get that? How did you make that happen? He's a fan of Not Scary Farm, so that helped. Uh, <laughs> and uh, he is very, very good friends with a, a, a magician named Ed Alonso, who performed at not scary for him for many years he headlined the event for many uh years and so through so through ed uh we were able to connect with uh, neil patrick harris and he was kind enough to write the forward uh to my book that's that's awesome just to get uh, uh mph on there that's that's freaking awesome to get someone like that to start the book but you have yeah, yeah that is just that yeah that's really cool um you mentioned through this book that a lot of companies and, and productions started noticing uh, who you are as, as passionate as a fan you were for, these, uh, for this like, Han industry. Um, which brings me to the question, uh, Plague Productions, of course, um, one of the biggest names right now in, in, in horror you know, productions right now, and it's a, you hear it a lot like at Midsummer Scream and all these conventions, you, you see and hear about Plague Productions a lot. Um, you have this amazing team that you guys put together. How did you guys go about um, meeting each other and just forming this this freaking all star cast team team of people? Well, uh, yeah, I, I mean, uh, after I kind of started spreading out and working with other companies for their respective Halloween events, uh, I became friends with John Cook, who is really the owner of Play Productions, and uh, he uh, at the time was this blossoming uh, designer at Not Scary Farm. So I would bring him in on some of my projects and he would bring me on in on some of his. And we just really had a, a good sort of uh, creative partnership working relationship. And so uh, after he left Knott's, uh, he developed uh, Black Market Escape Rooms, which uh, was the idea of, of, of doing a different type of escape room experience. And uh, the uh, theme that we came up with was Murder Co. And that was just spawned from the idea of what would we do if we did not have the constraints of a theme park? Uh, because if I'm working at, whether it's Universal Studios or if he's working at Knott's, whatever, uh, we, you always have that element of that umbrella of, of a theme park element that this does have to be appropriate for for most ages. So if, if, if we were up to us, what would we do if we did not have that kind of constraint? And so um, as a result uh, was Murderco, which was like the first R-rated horror escape experience. And so uh, it was th theatrically driven. And, uh, and, and we had a lot of fun uh, producing that and presenting that. And then uh, after a while, both John and I discovered that we weren't really into the idea of like operating that kind of business on a day-to-day -day, uh, basis. You know, it was it was it was fun to create it, uh, but to, to you know to keep it going and, and deal with all the overhead that kind of comes with those types of things and, and all the guests and all that stuff was just not necessarily something that uh, we were into. So eventually, he ended up selling that um, 
company. Uh, so I think Murdoch still exists, but I, but we don't have anything to do with it anymore. Uh, and as a result, uh, we still uh, had other companies we were working with as for in terms of clients and all that stuff. And so uh, he created Plague Productions, which was a way for us to uh, continue working with these other entities. Definitely. I think Personally, I think Plague Productions is such a freaking badass name, for one. I mean, you you got, I mean, you think of, when you think of plagues, you think of like, you know, of course, back in the, you know, back in the freaking, what was it, like 1300s? The Black stuff, Plague. The Black Plague, Black plague and, and stuff, but when you think of plague, it also goes hand in hand with horror, too, so it's such an amazing name for a production company. Um, yeah. So every year, you guys are, you know, the minute haunt season ends, even during haunt season, you guys are already planning stuff for next year. What challenges rise every year when designing and writing uh, new um, maze treatments, you know, ideas for the next, the following year? What, what challenges usually uh, rise for that every year? Yeah, I think the challenge is, is that it does need to remain uh, fresh and innovative each season. And so, um, the Halloween industry is very much an industry of, of what have you done for me lately. <laughs> so uh, as we could see with uh, local Halloween events like Knott's or Universal or whatever, Queen Mary, the idea is is you really kind of have to outdo yourself every season. And and and, and that's a way to, to not only uh, keep you on your toes, but to certainly uh, remain relevant in this industry. So it doesn't really matter if it's a family friendly event or something that's a lot more horror based. It's always about pushing and, and growing each year. And so we're also trying to uh, a little bit on, on some uh, scale uh, foresee what, uh, what, the, what the audience wants. Um, and that comes back to, you know, really being as educated as possible um, in terms of the client's demographic and, and, and all the, the technical aspects that go into creating these things to really be as, as educated as possible uh, when it comes to the creative decision making. Definitely, definitely. Um, and on top of that, I, I know that you've had a lot of successful, uh, a lot of successful mazes and, and events over the years. What would you say from the past has been your most um, your cha most challenging um, you know maze design or or haunt that you've done thus far. Hmm, that's a good question. Um, I mean, I think everything, everyone we do has its own set of challenges, just because the guest climate is always is continuing to grow and evolve and expand. And so no longer is it necessarily guests just kind of walking passively through a haunted house being scared by an actor that's going boo or whatever, or, or you know, walking by some sort of triggered animatronic. I think guests are looking for a lot more uh, substantive types of experiences. Yeah. And so I, I think each year has its own sets of challenges to um that 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 are presented because the the, the guests are um more maturing in in what they want um i mean look what's going on in just in regular themed entertainment with what disney does and you know rise of the resistance or what knots does with ghost town alive you know i mean these are groundbreaking types of presentations that um you know uh, that that are training the audience to become more uh, educated in, 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 in desiring that type of a situation. And so the Halloween events have to answer to that. And so that's what we're always trying to do is to try to up it each and every year. Um, but I mean, I think, uh, in, I think, uh, at least for me, like um, when I worked with Universal Studios with their Terror Tram um, back in the day, that was a fairly challenging simply because there's so many people that would go through that attraction and, and have to walk that footprint of, uh, you know, past Whoville and the Bates Motel, that, 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 that same uh, footprint that they had for so long. Uh, that was 
uh, pretty challenging to do something a, a little bit different um, with that e experience. Uh, and then, but even as, you know, recent, uh, you know, like I was mentioning Murder Co. before, I mean, that was something that John and I had not done before of, of, of writing a theatrically driven escape experience where, you know, the, we had actors that would uh, be engaging the guests throughout the entire experience. Uh, that was a, a, a pretty uh, decent challenge at the time because it was so different compared to what we were doing at the theme parks. Definitely. Um, <clears throat> I know one thing you, you had your hand in this year was the uh, Los Angeles Haunted Hayride, if I'm if I'm correct. Um, what were your yeah. thoughts on how, like, from design to actually, um, you know, staging it, how how do you think it turned out after all? Um, I could, considering that uh, it was the first year that, that we were brought in, um, I think we did pretty good. I think that there were certain uh, uh, challenges that, that certainly need to be addressed, uh, uh, but those are more on, are on the operational sides of things that doesn't really um, have very much to do with me. Uh, as far as the creative elements, though, I think uh, it's a good start. Um, I thought, um, you know, the idea behind creating this this town that has these mysteries revolving around it, where it's always caught in 1985 and it's always celebrating Halloween night, I thought... Um, lent itself well to, to um, some pretty cool uh, storytelling elements that I think um, a, a decent foundation um, w was laid out this past season. So I think, I mean, I'm, I'm proud of what we did creatively on it and, and, and especially with what the actors did in, in helping uh, bring it to life. I, I definitely agree. I really thought uh, when we had went out to it on its opening night, that it was very much an immersive experience, Ghost Town Alive, where from beginning to end, uh, uh, you know, it was like Ghost Town Alive, meaning like very much from beginning to end, you're very much immersed into the experience. Um, and everything was tied, I think, beautifully together. And really, with, you know, as you went, you know, from uh, a maze to maze or went on the hayride or you talked to, you know the various uh, actors out there they really just brought the story to new heights and new levels each uh with each interaction definitely thanks yeah i mean we really tried to do something a little bit different with that by tying each of the attractions to that one story and i think that was fairly uh unique to the southern california market where uh everything tied back to that story even if some elements were loosely tied back to that story at least it, it was there as the foundation so so i appreciate that you know i mean i think um you know we really tried to to to, to do that and um and 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 make that as clear as possible uh to to the average guest that was uh, was attending so that that's awesome that you noticed that no yeah i mean we uh we had um ag on our podcast uh when we did our character appreciation month and um I was telling him this, one of the things that I loved most about that was the interactiveness the, with all these characters and everything. Like we literally spent, I think, forty-five minutes talking to the characters in the uh, the town hall area just to get the story down. And it was it was fun going on this wild goose hunt to find out who did what, uh, who likes who, you know, all the the town rumors, all the town you know stories and stuff. It was just fun, and it eventually led us into the hayride. It led us into the midnight mortuary, the roadkill ranch, trick or treat. Like it, it eventually tied this whole story together, which is something I'm a huge sucker for. I love it when um, you know characters interact with you and they bring this story and immerse you into this universe, um, and they're part, they make you part of this universe, which I love so much. And um, I am excited to see what's in store for next year or this this coming uh, season 2020 because I had such a blast at this um, at this uh, at this event this year that if if I didn't even if I didn't get the free tickets at Midsummer Scream I was still gonna buy tickets to this event because that Midsummer Scream panel had me soul sold and I was just I was in love with it from when I heard it at Midsummer Scream so you guys freaking killed it this year. Uh, well, thank you very much. You know, that, the, AJ's a, a great guy. And that's one thing that we did learn is, 
you know, working with all of those town square actors, they were, were so, so wonderful. And, you know, it, the, the process just to share with you was, you know, we wrote, uh, the, you know, fairly in-depth stories for each and every one of those characters, uh, their backstories, how they felt about one another, uh, what they're doing in this town of Midnight Falls, what their place is and all that stuff. And, and the idea was to give them a, as much ammunition as possible to uh, do what they do, uh, do best, which was uh, bring these characters to life. We, we, we knew we didn't want them extremely scary because, um, you know, going back to my days at Knott's, I knew that, that uh, guests are a lot more apt to mess with monsters if the monsters are trying to do a job of being scary. And with this whole, whole kind of town uh, square area that was so exposed and not there's no real place to hide or anything, we just wanted these characters out there um, and being more engaging and but less scary so that way the guests could pay attention uh, and interact with them because a lot of guests if these people were being too scary the guests would be kind of a little uh, apprehensive in in trying to engage with them and so uh, you know giving these these actors uh, the tools uh, that they they uh, needed uh, was was one of the better decisions I think we made with that whole thing and then and luckily enough we had cast people like AJ who were really able to bring uh, those characters to life so so they did an awesome job and I'm so happy that you guys dug it yeah I, like I said I can't wait I'm already when we left that night I was already like I can't wait to see what happens next season because I had such an amazing time like I said I'm a sucker for all things interactive and I love it when I get to kind of play detective and unpuzzle a whole story and it, it, it was just it really it was really I, I had never been any I have never been to anything like that before so for that to for me to for the first time ever going to the hayride in general and then for it to be like this event like this kind of theming to it like it, it really it really made it a memorable haunt for me to want to keep coming back next year so I'm super excited to see what's going to happen this year with that and I cannot wait Awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah, that's that's fantastic. Um, so another question here. Uh, as a director uh, with Plague Productions, um, how many events uh, do you do you, uh, you know, wear hats at? Because um, I know obviously you guys have your hands in more than one event. Uh, well, it, it kind of differs from one season to the next. Uh, but I mean, for example, in, in 2019, um, we were dealing with LA Haunted Hayride. Um, we had worked on, on Dark Harbor at Queen Mary, as well as Dark Horizon in uh, Orlando, um, which are kind of like sister events. Um, not Scary Farm. Um, and then uh, other smaller, uh, like spinoff kind of not long events, uh, like uh, we did a interactive uh, for FX networks for American Horror Story and uh, it, it kind of it differs you know from from one season to the next but that's an example of what we did last year yeah it looks like you guys always have a, a busy uh, year on your hands and um, it's we we always look forward to seeing what you guys uh, have in store for us every year especially with all these events that you mentioned that we, we went to all of them last year and we enjoyed every single one of them uh and awesome we, we continue to come keep coming back because you guys do amazing work so awesome thank you yeah um so what what has been one of your uh, you may have a, a few of them probably a lot but is there any memorable like favorite maze that you worked on that like you always think back to like wow that was just outstanding i don't know how i can ever outdo myself on that or it, does it always create that challenge of like okay i did this how can I make something better? You know what I mean? Like, how can I keep going and keep uh, raising the bar? Um, I know it sounds kind of cliche, but they're all kind of sort of our kids, you know? So, I, I, uh, so I'm proud of all of them, even if some of them uh, may not have been as strong as others. But um, at the time, we're putting all of our effort in, into these things. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, 
like I said before, since everything is continuing to grow and expand within the, the guest climate, um, we are always striving to kind of outdo ourselves from the, the season prior. Uh, and in this business, as, as, as much as I like um, being sentimental and, and, and nostalgic and stuff, we don't really have a lot of time to be able to look too much into the rear view mirror. Uh, we kind of just have to take what we can, figure out what works, what doesn't, and, and put that into sort of our list an arsenal of, of experience so that way we can apply uh, educated decisions um, in each uh, attraction that, that we work on moving forward. Uh, but yeah, I mean, all of them are, are, are so, so different. I mean, LA Haunted Hayride was, you know, a full event uh, where, you know, not Scary Farm Origins was, was one maze. Um, and then, you know, uh, Queen Mary, that the Dark Harbor, especially in 2018, was kind of reimagining a, a whole event, um, and as well as Dark Horizons in Orlando. And that was a little bit different, too, because Orlando is a different um, market than what we have here in, in Southern California. And so uh, that needed to be uh, addressed a little bit differently as well. But um, I know it's not like the best answer in the world as far as like what's been my favorite or anything, but I think all of them have a huge place in my heart. Um, and especially for all of the actors that do these things and, 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 um, and bring these uh, concepts to life. Uh, these people are, you know, the, 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 the folks that, that are in the trenches day in, day out, uh, bringing these experiences to life. It's so, uh, you know, because all of those people are such different personalities that makes these events uh, their own type of personality and each attraction their own personality. So it's really hard to say which one is like like a favorite over, or, over another. Um, but uh, I think what keeps us going is really the, the, the excitement of what comes next. Definitely, because, yeah, that, that was uh, an amazing answer right there because, um, yeah, that, that really shows, again, coming back to it, shows how passionate you are about your job and, and what you want to give to the haunt industry. I mean, to say that every everything that you've you've helped create and everything and that you have a special love for them, that's amazing because, you know, people go in and out and everyone will have, like, a favorite. Like, as fans, everybody has a favorite year because of this, you know, specific thing. It has a special place in their heart. And they have another favorite year because of this, you know. So I could see where you're coming from as far as, you know, you have – Every everything that you've designed and created that you they all have special places in your heart because you know you put you put your time and effort into it and you put you know your blood sweat and tears into it and in the end the result it came out the way I'm hoping the way you wanted it too so um, yeah that's that that's that's amazing to hear yeah I mean we try you know I mean the, the... As, as much as we put into it yeah I mean we, the one thing that we cannot control is whether or not the guests are going to dig it right and yeah. so um all, all we could do is put our, our best foot forward in hopes in anticipation that uh that we do something that that people uh like and and some of these things people like more than others and um and and that's fine i mean i do look at these uh attractions these events as as art installations and just as with any art whether or not it's a painting or it's a book or a piece of music or whatever it is i mean it's up to the the the, the viewer the listener or whatever the pre person who experiences the art it's up to them whether or not they're gonna uh find meaning in it and 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 uh find entertainment value in it so uh if if that's the case then i guess we're the artists that are trying to put this out and and uh all we could do is hope and, and, and pray that people dig it. But luckily enough for, for us, we you know we we get enough callbacks so that way uh, we can keep continue going forward and uh, keep trying to improve every season as, as as October approaches. Definitely, always looking to make that next big um, you know piece of art. <clears throat> uh, what would your uh, advice be for someone who wants to get into the haunt industry, whether it be as a scare actor or on the creative side? Um, well, scare actor, that's one thing. I mean, um, I, I would say 
as a scare actor, just don't waste your time and just do it. I spent a long, a long, long time not auditioning for Not Scary Farm because I didn't think I had what it took. Um, I was a music major in college, so I was sort of in the the theater world, but not as like an actor in that sense. And so I remember back in the day seeing all the, the newspaper articles of all of these auditions that Not Scary Farm would do and making these people do all these crazy see things in the audition I'm like I can't do any of that I even took a, an improv class in college just so I could try to get the chops on what it would take to uh, successfully audition for not scary farm and I dropped out after the first day I'm like oh no this is not <laughs> for me so uh, years later I was able to, to, to get in and uh, at the time I got in they temporarily did away with auditions for streets uh, because the return rate was so high uh, so they would they only needed to pull from the inside. So I was uh, lucky enough to kind of get in uh, initially, uh, not auditioning, um, and then years later they brought the auditions back, and I had to do it. Uh, but I mean, it's really not that bad. But the point is, I wasted a long time of of just being too fearful of auditioning, and so um, that would be my advice to anybody who's sort of on the fence or daydreams about one day doing that. Uh, um, I would just say go for it. Just you kind of have to step, you know, off the ledge and, and and be brave enough to get through this the crazy audition and 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 participate in the audition. That's what when we audition people, that's what we're looking for primarily is to see if the people are willing to play along. That's half the battle, and so just do that. And 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 uh, if you don't get it the first time around, keep going back. And, and, and it is an incredible, incredibly rewarding uh, experience if you are into this type of thing. So as a, as a monster, I say go for it. It doesn't matter what the venue is, if it's not a universal or even a home haunt, it doesn't really matter. Uh, I think uh, just to go out and do it is, is, is the main um, sort of, I guess, advice that I would give. And in terms of anything else, in terms of like production, or any of that. I mean, uh, theater certainly helps, uh, but also just trying to get your foot in the door at, at any kind of uh, your local theme park, amusement park, family entertainment center, whoever's hosting some sort of Halloween event, I would certainly try to uh, get in there. And uh, it could be simply um, at the beginning, a volunteer basis type of situation, but at least you're uh, understanding or at least learning the basic fundamentals on putting these shows together and really be a sponge and pay attention to everything that's going on around you. Uh, if you are working in one department, really kind of investigate what's going on in the, all the other departments as well. So that way you see how all these puzzle pieces fit together to put on an overall show. Um, and, and I know that I mean, I'm a, huge believer like even home haunters really uh i mean these are some really talented folks and so uh, some of them put on incredible presentations and so i mean i think that's even a way to get your foot in the door in terms of knowledge and to get to a point where you can make a buck off of it it's really uh trying to find either an independent attraction or a professional attraction or a theme park, uh, obviously some entity that's that's bringing in money that could hopefully one day uh, pay uh, you for your services. Definitely, definitely. I mean, I see, I hear it, I hear it in your voice, man. I hear the passion about this thing. I mean, this guy, he is literally, he, he you're the same way, Ted. You started from the bottom and now, you're you're here <laughs> you, you've made it to the you've made it to your 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 creative position and uh you started as a fan now you're you're building um you're building as a fan which is freaking it's awesome and i and i'd love to see what plague has to bring every year to the table i mean they have never disappointed in the past so i am excited to see what they can do every single year going forward um and I, I get, ex I, I'm just ready for it. I'm ready for 2020 to see what you guys have to bring on the table. I'm ready to see what the future holds for Plague. I, I can't wait to see what's going to happen next with Plague. I'm, I'm, I'm just excited. Um, 
So, our, our final, final question, question, usually that we ask guests, uh, just because everyone's a horror fan and everyone usually starts somewhere, what is your favorite horror movie? Ooh. Um, well, my most influential horror movie's got to be The Howling. Uh, I saw that way too young, and that scarred me for life to the <laughs> point where I am now obsessed with werewolves. I it was a, a werewolf in ghost town any chance i have to uh, fit a werewolf into any uh, experience I, I certainly will um so loved you know those those rob team like special effects when eddie quist is turning in, in into a werewolf right before your very eyes was just something that just you know was so nightmare inducing but it stuck with me for, for for many years, all these years later. So I'd have to say that is sort of my go-to. Like I mentioned before, I'm a huge fan of like Dawn of the Dead, like the original Dawn of the Dead, the original Halloween, um, Evil Dead 2, like all that kind of stuff. But I think overall, just because it had such a lasting impact would be The Howling. Nice, nice, nice. I mean, I, I'm with you, Ted. I'm a huge sucker for werewolf, so. I mean, if I see him at the events, I will go nuts because I, yeah, I love werewolves. I mean, anything from the Wolfman, American Werewolf in London, um, you name it. I, I'll probably, I'll, I'll watch them. I'll, I'll go to the events with them. It's, it's it honestly brings a true, uh, amazing experience for me. Well, Ted, uh, we thank you so much for being on the show today, and we are th very thankful that you um, came on and, and shared this. Uh, experience with us of yeah, a little bit behind the scenes of what goes on behind the scenes at Plague Productions year round and and um, what it was like coming up from a, a monster to where you're at now and um, like I said Plague Productions does amazing work and every year we look forward to see what's to come next with them so we can't wait to see what's in store for the 2020 season and um, again we just thank you for being on the show. Thank you guys so much for hanging out, uh, inviting me to hang out, and I can't wait to see you guys at our future events. Definitely. So uh, everybody, make sure to follow Plague Productions on social media because you're gonna want to you're gonna want to stay in tune to see what these these amazing people are doing for the next haunt season. And of course, uh, follow us on social media on Instagram at uh, the Knights of Horror and on Twitter uh, Knights of Horror. And uh, be sure to hit that subscribe and bell notification to be updated on when we post new uh, content regarding haunts, horror, uh, anything pretty much horror. So um, uh, thank you, everyone, for watching. Thanks to Ted for being on the show. And we will see you guys in the next one. Peace.